Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. You know, Prairie Public has been sponsoring the Reading Rainbow Young Writers and Illustrators Contest in our broadcast region for 14 years now. And this year, we had more than 380 children who participated in grades kindergarten through the third grade. And you know, they're all winners uh, as they wrote their stories and, and illustrated them and sent them in to be judged. Uh, today, we have joining me, uh, Kenzie Carson. Kenzie, thanks for joining us today. Now, tell me where you're from. Wahala. You're from Wahala, North Dakota, and you were in the top 12 out of 45,000 students who participated in the U.S. and Canada. Did you know, did you know that? Yeah. You did? Well, all right. And you were uh, a winner at the national level as you placed third in the first grade level. Is that right? Mm hmm Well, so you wrote a story and illustrated it. Uh, Tell me a little bit about uh, what made you write this story. Because my grandpa has Alzheimer's and I was just wanted the world to know so that he could get better. You want the world to know so he could get better. Well, that, that is an excellent reason for that. And, and we should tell the world about, about Alzheimer's. Now, did your class participate in this? No. So what made you decide that you wanted to do it? besides that I mean so so have you ever written a story before no you haven't no did you have fun writing this one yeah was it very special to you because of your grandpa yeah well, well tell me a little bit about uh, did you write the words first or did you do the pictures first I did the pictures to get an idea and then I started writing about my grandpa so you did the pictures first and, and then you wrote the words and, and it was all about your grandpa. Well, you know, so how exciting has this been for you? I mean, uh, a lot of people have now seen your story, and what do they think about it? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, but so, you know, have you had a chance to read your story much to a lot of people? Yeah. You have? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, of course, by, by winning at the national level, you also got to win some prizes, didn't you? Yeah. What all did you get there? I got an iPod and some movies and books. An iPod, a Reading Rainbow book, and, yeah, some movies. And uh, also, I think your school is going to get something because you won. So they're mm -hmm. going to receive some of those items also, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great for you and your school. Are you going to encourage your classmates uh, to write stories in the future? Yeah, probably. Probably, because I, I think that that's great, because your class didn't do it, but you did it, and you won uh, first place at the local level and then went on to win at the national level. So, I mean, that is fantastic. Now, tell me a, a little bit about your grandpa. Do, do you get to see him much? Yeah. You do? Well, that's good. And uh, now, where is grandpa is where? In the nursing home. At, in Wahala? Mm-hmm. He is? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, can you read your story for us? Sure. You can? Okay. Grandpa and Me by Kenji Joe Carson. My dad tells me stories about Grandpa when he was his dad. When my dad was a little boy, my Grandpa was smart. He could do lots of things. Now my Grandpa has Alzheimer's disease, so he forgets stuff. Grandpa used to play checkers some more and arm wrestling with me. Now we watch TV together. My grandpa calls me that girl because he doesn't remember my name anymore. That's okay because I think the nickname is cool. When I was five, grandpa took me for a four-wheeler ride, but now he doesn't because he can't drive. Now we walk together. Grandpa tells me, Grandpa tells me which foot goes in his shoe, and he says, how do you know this stuff? Grandpa calls his cat a dog, but I understand him. Sometimes my grandpa looks in the mirror and sees himself. He starts talking to himself, but that's okay because it keeps him busy. Once my grandpa put his hand under the lawn more and cut his thumb, now we work together so he stays safe. 
Sometimes I wish that I knew Grandpa when he didn't have Alzheimer's. My grandpa is changing, but he is still special to me. Well, that is a great story, and he is special to you. And again, you wrote this story, and you hope what? People will learn from this again and do do about this. That they could give money to the hospital or and get something, Medicare or something, to like make him better. Yeah. So the whole world. So they hope they can find a cure for Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And your story was very educational for us to learn about that. And we hope that you, are you going to write more stories now? Yeah. You are? Well, that's great. And we thank you for coming in today. And we hope that you continue to write. And then maybe uh, you can participate next year and enter at the second grade level. Can you do that? Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Kenzie, we hope you enjoy all your prizes. And thank you so much for joining us today. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Thank you, Kenzie. We enjoyed that very much. Joining me now is Gretchen Dovervich because you recently got married. I did. Okay, so that, uh, so that's why I have scratched out the name here. You just <laughs> told us. Congratulations on that. But you're the regional director for the Alzheimer's Association Minnesota North Dakota chapter. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us on. As, as we get started, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, I lived in North Dakota my whole life. Um, I have a degree in social work from Minot State University and I've worked for the Alzheimer's Association. I started on my ninth year this month and um, have um, almost always worked in long-term care and really enjoyed working with people that have Alzheimer's disease related dimensions and, and have a family connection to mm -hmm. the disease as well. Well, you just watched, uh, of course, our Reading Rainbow winner uh, Kenzie Carson, and, and as she read her story, what, what's your reaction to that? It's a great story, um, really, and she's a wonderful author, and boy, she's very good at interviews. Um, and and I guess my, my thought about it, what my first reaction was, is that this is not just something that affects old people. Um, that's one of the, the big myths about this disease. We're, we're all affected by it. Um, both my husband and I had grandmothers who weren't at our wedding. Um, because of dementias and so uh, it's just not something that affects old people and you don't have to be old to get Alzheimer's disease either. Yeah well obviously it appears that this story may have helped Kinsey sort of deal with with her uh, grandfather's illnesses and maybe how she was dealing with it but uh, what's your advice to, to parents regarding the issue then? When I work with uh, families and as particularly with children, um, telling them what's going on. Um, there are, are several books out there that have been written for children um, and, and folks can call our office to, to, to access that. Um, but really explaining what's happening and telling them things that they can do when they go to visit grandma and grandpa. And, and, and what do you say when, when grandpa calls the cat a dog? Um, is the best way to help children because they know that something's not right with grandpa or grandma and and they're scared about it too. Okay, Well tell us a little bit about I guess the uh, Minnesota North Dakota chapter uh, now that's 
one region, but obviously, there, can you expand on that and tell us more about it? Sure. The Alzheimer's Association is a, a national organization. Um, we work with um, people and families um, who are affected by Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia as well. Um, as you said, the Minnesota North Dakota chapter, we're just one chapter within all 50 states. Um, and there's the Alzheimer's Society in Canada, um, sort of our sister organization. And um, I, I work in the eastern North Dakota region. Regional Center. We serve all of Eastern North Dakota and Clay County, Minnesota. Um, we have a Western North Dakota office in Bismarck. We have a Western Minnesota office in St. Cloud. Um, the northeast part is of Minnesota is covered by our Duluth office. We have a metro office in the cities and then uh, Rochester serves the southern um, tier of Minnesota. So irregardless of which state you live in, um, either side of the river, there's, there's help out there. Well, so, so what's the mission then of, uh, of your organization? Um, our mission is to improve the quality of life of people living with dementias and their care partners, um, as well as working towards a world with no Alzheimer's disease. Hmm. Well, do you work with family members to come up with uh, alternatives or treatment options? Um, we do. We offer uh, several different services for families. Um, one of them is our 24-hour, seven-day-a-week helpline. Um, oftentimes, families will call and say, I've noticed these things going on. Um, what do we do next? Should we be concerned? Um, and then after families have seen their physician, um, then we'll meet with them and help them develop a plan of care. Um, there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease right now, but just like other illnesses, diabetes, arthritis, um, we can improve quality of life by managing the symptoms, and we can help families with that, um, as well as provide support. Well, okay, for people watching, and you would hope most people might already know this, but help us out a little bit. What is Alzheimer's disease, and, and then how many Americans does it affect, well, and Canadians, I guess, yep. or <laughs> does, does, how many people does it affect? Um, Alzheimer's disease affects 5.2 million Americans right now. And um, in North Dakota and Minnesota, that number is about 130,000 people. And right here in North Dakota, about 18,000 North Dakotans um, have just Alzheimer's type dementia. And there are multiple other types of dementia. Um, Alzheimer's disease affects people in every country. It's not just something that happens right here. Um, it's a progressive degenerative neurological disorder. Um, the part, not only the part of our brain where our memory is affected, um, but also language is affected, the ability to walk is affected. Um, various parts of the brain are affected by Alzheimer's disease. So it's more than just getting a little bit forgetful. Hmm. Well, uh, you know, you mentioned there, there, there's not a cure right now. Uh, but there's research going on all the time. Is there anything you can tell us about that? There is. There's a lot of medications that are in the pipeline. Um, there's lots of studies being done looking at genetics. Can we find a genetic link? Um, environmental studies being done, finding out is there something we can do in our environment? You know, lifestyle kinds of studies have shown that, you know, diets high in antioxidants, getting exercise, staying connected to your community, all of those things um, can help reduce your chances but they don't 100% prevent getting Alzheimer's. So um, lots of research, not a lot of answers yet. Well, you say not a lot of answers. Are, are we, uh, well, my question here, and I, it's probably not a fair question, but how many years are we away from finding a cure? I can't answer that. Um, I, I would hope that tomorrow I get a pink slip. That's always my hope with my job. Sure. Well, with baby boomers, of course, you've got a huge generation coming up aging. Uh, what does the next 20 years or so look like in terms of sort of patients coming into the system uh, and needing treatment? Um, Alzheimer's disease has been called the healthcare epidemic of the 21st century by researchers. Um, in, by the year 2050, there will be 16 million Americans that have Alzheimer's disease. Um, in just the first 20 years of this century, there will have been a 60% increase in North Dakota in the number of people with Alzheimer's disease. And so um, not only very taxing on our healthcare system, but on families, because we know that most people with Alzheimer's disease are cared for in their homes, in their communities um, by a family member. Well, and so that, that you've already started in, so how does the disease affect families? Much like Kenzie with her story, obviously it's her grandpa and uh, you know, she's a little, uh, may our children are, get confused as to why 
uh, their grandparents maybe don't recognize them or things like that. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how does it affect families? In the earlier stages, um, early middle stage of the disease process, families are providing the primary care. And so you've got family members who are caring for their children, um, caring for themselves, working their, working at their jobs, um, also going over and helping mom or dad out. Um, or you have elderly spouses who are, are caring um, for each other. Um, that have Alzheimer's disease. And so it's, it's very emotionally taxing, uh, very physically stressful as well. Um, and then once the person needs a higher level of care, um, then you're also looking at um, financial issues. Um, because it is a very long disease process, it's also very costly disease as well. Well, so when does a, a family know that it's time for outside help or, or to either be brought in or of course consider uh, nursing home options, much like uh, Kinsey uh, family uh, ended up doing, or is this sort of a family decision that, I mean, how many, yeah, what all do you have to take into account? Um, there's a lot of various factors, and it, and it depends on um, how much time family is available um, to provide care. The other thing is, is is that as a person advances in the disease process, their physical care needs become very heavy and oftentimes we can't um, accommodate that at home even though we'd like to do that. Um, we have a checklist at the Alzheimer's Association available for families to kind of help decide. You know, one thing I always tell people is home safety. Um, are they remembering to turn the oven off? Are they um, cooking food? Are they not eating spoiled food? Um, you know, are they not turn, filling the tub full of just hot water? So a lot of home safety kinds of things are triggers that maybe, maybe mom or dad can't live at home alone anymore. Hmm. But from what we know of the, the disease, how come patients uh, can oftentimes remember things from their childhood but yet can't remember something that happened maybe two minutes prior? Short-term memory is affected first, and that's a question I get a lot. Um, people will call our office and say, my mom was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. She remembers everything that happened in 1947. How can that be? Um, and it's the short-term memory that's affected first. And as people progress in Alzheimer's disease, their minds move back in time. And the first things we learn in life are the last things that people tend to forget. And so that's why childhood memories um, really are the reality of a person that has advanced Alzheimer's disease. And we also know Alzheimer's patients, I guess, can sometimes get violent or obstinate. Um, so I assume this has to be a consideration uh, for families also. It is very difficult for families. And, and when people with Alzheimer's disease have those more aggressive behaviors, they're actually reacting to things that are happening in their environment. They're lost, they're confused, they're scared, they don't recognize their family members, they don't recognize their environment, um, and we all react in some way to those things. And oftentimes it comes out in an aggressive way, and so having an environment that's set up for a person with Alzheimer's, knowing how to verbally and non-verbally communicate with someone um, that has has Alzheimer's disease and, and knowing correct care techniques can pretty much eliminate a lot of those behaviors and so families you know we always encourage them educate yourselves um, get support and and utilize appropriate care no one can do this alone so, so then what are the uh, warning signs uh, I guess the early warning signs that maybe somebody needs to get tested mm -hmm. um, always short-term memory loss um, Confusion as far as time, showing up at the wrong time or the wrong date, thinking that it's perhaps a different day. Um, putting uncommon place or putting common items in uncommon places. Uh, you know, we all put something somewhere where we're never going to forget it, and then we spend two hours in the morning trying to find our purse or our wallet or our keys or our cell phone. Um, that happens for folks that are in the early stages of Alzheimer's. They never remember where that place is. Um, other things you see is, is that people will have personality changes and mostly you'll see that they withdraw more. It's more and more difficult to go out and do things, um, ordering off a menu, playing bridge, um, navigating streets around town, and so folks will want to stay at home where things are familiar. Um, also difficulty finding words. People will describe items or describe people or places as opposed to be able to specifically name them. Um, those are things as well. And 
And when people start having problems with their memory right away, they, they worry, oh my gosh, it's Alzheimer's. And people should talk to their physician about memory problems because there are a lot of things that mimic Alzheimer's disease that are treatable. Um, if your blood sugars um, are out of whack, poor nutrition, depression, um, sleep disorders, there are just a multitude of things that could be causing the memory issues. And so people shouldn't panic right away, um, but they should definitely see their physician. Well, you already got my next question because obviously <laughs> my wife would say uh, I'm getting forgetful, but but so but but that's common too and you said there could be other things that that could be attributed there to There are uh, stress, information overload, um, not sleeping well, not hearing properly. You know, as we grow older, um, sometimes we need to enhance our hearing. And if, you know, folks aren't hearing everything, you, you, you do miss parts of conversations um, and, and can appear to be having some memory issues. Well, talk a little bit about, you know, uh, the ages this affects. So, I mean, it, it's more common in, in uh, older and of course, older. I don't even want to go with where older <laughs> is because 80 is young to me. But but so uh, yeah. What ages? When does it affect? Uh People. The older you are, the more likely you are to get Alzheimer's disease. In fact, half of all people over the age of 85 will develop Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. um, one in six women who live to be uh, 55 will develop the disease, and one in 10 men who live to be 55 will develop Alzheimer's disease. Um, even though it's more common the older you are, you don't have to be old to get Alzheimer's disease. The young onset form affects people in their 40s, 50s, and early 60s, and in rare instances, people in their 30s have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and the first person that there's clinical documentation of having this disease was only in her early 50s so it's not just an old person's disease. Mm. Well uh, is there any treatment uh, currently that can sort of slow uh, the progression uh, of Alzheimer's? There are. Um, there are four medications on the market for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. They don't cure Alzheimer's disease. Um, when people take them, oftentimes their family members don't see miraculous improvement in them, but what they do is they help the person retain their skills and, they mem and the memories they have now for a longer period of time. And so it helps improve quality of life. Uh, and they work the best when people start taking them earlier in the disease process. So again, another reason it's important to see your doctor um, because you can start treatment sooner and people can start planning for their future. Um, having a plan is very important um, when you've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and we really encourage um, people who have been diagnosed with the disease to participate in that planning and with early diagnosis they're able to do that. Okay, well, the Alzheimer's Association, uh, at whatever region you happen to be in, so if they contact you, uh, tell us more about, uh, you know, will you go into the home and work with people or, you know, Tell us more, a little bit more about your services. Okay. We offer a variety of services. One of them, that 24-hour, seven-day-a-week mm -hmm. helpline that's available. People can call and get information. Um, people can also go to our website, get information, contact staff from that website. We also have a care consultation program where people can come into our offices or we can do it over the phone or go into their home in some instances and help them develop a plan of care, answer questions that they may have. Um, we also do classes, workshops speak at conferences, um, do trainings in communities as well, um, and advocacy is a huge part, you know, going to Washington and advocating for more money for research, going to Bismarck and letting our legislators know um, we really have a health care crisis in North Dakota with Alzheimer's disease and how are we going to tackle that. Um, so advocacy and of course research. Um, always advocating raising money through our memory walks for more research dollars as well. Um, and as Kinsey talked about, you know, people can do that. Um, you know, people can ask for more money. People can give money for research so that we can find a cure. Well, and you say that. So how is uh, your organization funded? We are a privately funded organization, um, so purely through donations and grants from private private entities. Now, for people seeking services, are there fees they have to? There are some services we do charge a fee okay. for, safe returns, some of our education classes, um, but we underwrite the cost of them to keep them affordable for people, and many of our services are at no cost to families at all. Okay, well that's great there. Um, some patients live for years with the disease, yet uh, some don't. Do we know why? 
Um, it really varies. The average lifespan for a person with Alzheimer's after diagnosis is eight to 10 years. Um, oftentimes there are other health factors. Um, I think of my great grandmother who did have young onset Alzheimer's, died in her early 50s, not from her Alzheimer's, but a, a bad heart. Um, and so oftentimes people will pass away from other health issues other than the Alzheimer's. Um, and then also one of the things we don't understand, why do some people progress faster than others do? Any other advice you'd give a family who's just beginning to deal with this? Uh... I would say educate yourself, um, read what you can, and contact the Alzheimer's Association. There isn't a cure, but there's a lot of help and support that's available. Okay, so they shouldn't have to tackle it alone. There, there's plenty of help out there. But I guess finally, if more folks want uh, more information on Alzheimer's, uh, or your association, where can they go, who can they call? They can call our 1-800 number at 1-800-232-0851 or they can go to our website which is www.alzmndak.org. Okay, well Gretchen, thank you so much for, for joining us today and informing us about Alzheimer's. Thank and, you. Uh, well, that's all we have this week. We do want to thank Gretchen and Kinsey for joining us today. And that's all we have this week for Prairie Pulse. As always, thanks for watching.